How to troubleshoot WeatherTrack 2 wire. The first step in troubleshooting the WeatherTrack 2 wire is being able to identify when you have a 2 wire issue. To do this, we need to first disqualify any WeatherTrack controller issues. That is to say, that up here we have the WeatherTrack interface, and this will manage many of the things that you manage with your WeatherTrack system, including all of the scheduling information and other WeatherTrack feature specific information. So if there's an issue, the first thing to do is identify where the issue lies. Is it a WeatherTrack issue that you can see online, or does it use our two wire specific interface? That is to say, below the WeatherTrack interface, we have the WeatherTrack two wire interface. And the WeatherTrack 2-wire interfaces manages turning stations on and off in the field. So all of your scheduling information is run by the WeatherTrack interface, and the 2-wire interface is only reporting on the valve function and electrical conditions in the field. So the first step in troubleshooting 2-wire is making sure that what we're looking at is a 2-wire issue, and we're not dealing with a WeatherTrack issue like program alerts or communication alerts. And once you've identified that it's an issue with the two-wire path, you'll want to focus on the two-wire interface. So as we turn our attention to the two-wire interface, we see first our LED diagnostics and our digital screen along with the buttons that will help us manage the menus. And as you start to look at the two-wire display, usually if the problem is on the two-wire path, there will be an alert that is present on this display. But in any case, the display will highlight the vital information we need to manage the two-wire path and the two-wire controller. So as we look at the report on the two-wire path, we see the first item, which is the voltage that's being delivered down that path. Remember that there's always voltage present on the two-wire path. So as you're maintaining, be careful not to get zapped. And every system will have a slightly different voltage reading depending on their power source. But in an idle state, we like to see that it's somewhere in the mid-30s. And next to that, we have the milliamp reading. And for me, this is the most important thing that the two-wire interface displays because this milliamp reading shows the health of your two-wire path. So again, this number is going to be different for every system that's out there, but there is a rule of thumb to calculate what your milliamp reading should be based on the number of decoders that you're running on your system. So to calculate the milliamp draw for your system, take the number of decoders that you're running and divide it in half. Every decoder that your system manages shows about a half a milliamp on the two-wire path. So if you have a 12-station controller and you're running 12 decoders, you'll measure 6 milliamps for all 12 decoders, and then you'll add to that 1 milliamp for the controller. Sometimes you'll have a little bit higher, but generally 1 milliamp for the controller and 0.5 for every decoder is right exactly where you need to be. So. After the system is installed, I check to make sure I've hit that number. So with our 12 station controller example, we would have 6 milliamps for the decoders and 1 milliamp for the controller for a total milliamp draw on this controller of 7 milliamps. And that means that every wire connection is tight and the two wire path is pristine all the way through the system. But if there's any inconsistency in the wire, that number will start to rise. And so for every milliamp after this baseline reading, you're recognizing a place in the system that is weak and might eventually fail. So the first thing I do when thinking about troubleshooting a two-wire controller is check the alert interface for any alert notification like two-wire shorted. And if there's an alert notification or the system is reading a higher milliamp reading than expected, then there's an issue with the two-wire path. And once we're using the information on the WeatherTrack two-wire interface to identify when there's an issue with the system, the first thing we need to do is isolate the issue. And we can con immediately eliminate the controller from suspicion with one easy test. To eliminate the controller from suspicion, we have to disconnect it from the two-wire path. And with the WeatherTrack hardware, we've made this easy to do. Here in the lower left-hand corner of the two-wire interface where you see the two two-wire paths plugged into the controller over each of those terminals you see a switch that we can easily turn off the two-wire path that's plugged into these terminals so we can quickly isolate the controller from the two-wire path if we turn these off as pictured here then the alert will resolve on the two-wire display and the milliamp reading on the diagnostic screen will go back to less than three because it's been isolated from the two-wire path and all it's measuring is the controller.
This is also an important troubleshooting tool because cutting into live wires is a good way to get zapped. So when you're troubleshooting out in the field, if you're cutting into these wires, you want to turn them off at the source before you do. So here it is in real time. You see the alert present on the two wire interface. The two wire shorted message is displayed. I come up here, I turn off the two wire path that has the known issue on it. It takes the controller a second to reset, but it will go through the process, reset the alert, and go back to its idle state. 35 volts, 2 milliamps. And once we've isolated the controller, we know that the issue is on the two wire path. And the next question is always, okay, where on the two wire path? So let's talk about the weather track features that help find the problem in your two wire path. So the first step in troubleshooting the two wire path is isolating that two wire path with the switches and only keep on the path that you suspect of having a fault on the two wire. So leave the bad path on and turn on the short finding tool on the controller. And to do this we go to our weather track two wire interface and we hit cancel cancel. We get to our main screen. We hit one arrow to the left and that brings up the main menu and the first option is tests and that's what we want so we hit enter <clears throat> and now that we're on the test menu the first option is station electrical and that's not the test that we want we want to scroll down it's the next test down called the short finding that we want so we scroll down one button to short finding and then hit enter and that will turn on the short finding mode on the controller. So when you turn on the short finding tool, the controller sends a diagnostic signal down that wire that can be measured with a leaking current clamp meter. So before we go any further, we need to talk about the two tools required for WeatherTrack two wire troubleshooting. Specifically, a site map that shows the run of the two wire path and a leaking current clamp meter. When I turn on the short finding mode, on the two wire interface it sends a test signal down the path and displays the total milliamp reading coming back to the controller from the farthest ends so what you see at the controller is the total milliamp reading for the entire two wire path so to test it we turn on the short finding mode and we get a sample reading at the controller and at the controller we're gonna see the total of all of the inefficiencies. We're going to get this as a baseline reading and maybe here at the controller we test it and we get a hundred milliamps on this line. Something way out of the ordinary for a two-wire path. Remember my biggest controllers operate at about 50 milliamps so anything outside of the norm is what we're looking for here. We turn on the short finding mode on the two-wire interface and then we take our clamp meter and we get a measurement at the controller and then we move to our first junction box. And we trace that wire into the field by going valve box to valve box and looking at every connection on the system. This is why a site map is a required tool because the field testing requires a systematic assessment of the conditions in the field and knowing exactly where everything is and how it's all tied together is the only way that this actually makes sense. And if you don't have one of these, it makes troubleshooting significantly more difficult. So if you don't have a map, make a map. And to run this test, you're going to need a special type of voltmeter called a leaking current clamp meter. And the one that I use is from Armada. We recommend the Pro 93 as the standard. And so all of our guys have the Pro 93, and we all know how it works. And <laughs> it makes it easy for us to help you when you call. But any leaking current clamp meter will do as long as it measures milliamps. And what this tool does is it allows us to measure the current in the system without disconnecting the individual splices which saves an immense amount of time and money because what you're doing on the field test is following this two wire path that starts here at the bottom of the valve box comes into the valve box and there's two wires that go in it runs through the decoder and the valve and then runs out of the valve box so in every valve box I want four measurements the two line one coming in and going out and line two coming in and going out so literally I take my clamp meter and I wrap it around line one on the inline and then line one on the outline and then I take the other wire and I do line two on the inline and line two on the outline. So there's four measurements in every box and most commonly it's the wire nuts that fail in these systems. So if you don't have the proper wire nuts or the 3M DBR wire connectors on every wire connection in your entire system then I would suspect it of being bad. 
because any presence of moisture that touches copper will, will cause some level of short on the wire. Also, if somebody was not overly cautious while splicing these connections together, that can cause the wire to short over time. There's lots of reasons that these places where we've managed the wires before are the places that it most commonly fails. So pay attention, because here's how you know if you found something. With the short finding mode on, any piece of the wire that is before the short will have a very high milliamp reading. Any piece of wire that is after the short will have a very low milliamp reading. So if coming into this valve box you have 100 milliamps and going out of this valve box you have 7, that's a significant change and that difference indicates that there's a short in one of these components or connections. Which brings us back to how to troubleshoot that two wire path. We start by isolating the two wire path, then we turn on the short finding tool on the controller and we trace the wire using the leaking current clamp meter and the map to locate the issue in the field. That's what we want to talk about that final step in the process. So to troubleshoot a weather track two wire in the field, I walk up to the controller, I look at the two wire interface and read the milliamp reading on the two wire path. And if it is out of line, then the first thing I do is isolate which two wire path has a fault on it. And so I turn off this two wire path and focus on the one that has the fault. And let's walk through an example and say that I have a fault on this valve right here. And so uh, I don't know that. I walk up to the controller. I see that there's a fault. The first thing I do is put the controller into short finding mode and send the test signal down that wire. And then I use my leaking current clamp meter to get baseline signals at the controller. And let's go back to our earlier example of measuring 100 milliamps at the controller. And then I go to the first junction box in the field and I get a measurement there. What I would expect is the line coming from the controller has the same milliamp reading coming into this box as it did leaving the last one. And so it's just a junction box so it's going to go off in two directions. And so when I make the measurements here I'll have three measurements to take. The inlet side and both outlet sides. When I measure the outlet side that doesn't have an error on it, it measures very low because there's no short. So when I test that leg, if it shows a very low reading, I know I don't need to chase the low reading, I need to chase the high reading. So I continue to move up the other path, and when I measure the up leg of the path that has the fault on it, I'll get that very high reading again. And what we're doing when we're troubleshooting two wire is we're chasing that high reading. The fault lives with that high reading, so we've got to find where that high reading is happening. And so we move to the next valve up the line, and, and because we lost three milliamps from that last branch, I would expect this measurement to be about 97. And so that still means that the fault is ahead of me. I test the next valve, I get another 97. I come to the next junction box, and again, I have 97 on the incoming side, and I wanna measure the two different branches if I measure down the main branch, all of a sudden my current value would drop significantly. And I would just be measuring the components left on that end of the line. So since there's 12 components down there, we'd see a measurement of 6 on this path from this branch on. But this other branch that has the fault on it will still measure very, very high. And this branch right here would be measuring 91 when it should be measuring 2. So we would know the fault laid down this short line. We would measure at the next valve, maybe measure a 90, measure at the one after that, maybe measure an 89. After that, we get to the next valve and we see it drop significantly, like almost off the chart at this point. We see it drop to 0.5 or 1 milliamp. And that means that somewhere in between this good measurement and my last bad measurement is where that short is in the line. Once you've got that wire short isolated, you go into the valve box, find and fix the connection that needs fixing, and when the short is resolved, the milliamp reading on the controller should go back to normal, and the alert on the two-wire interface should resolve itself. So here's what that looks like in real time. The digital interface shows us there's an alert on the controller. It says two wires shorted. So to trace down where that short in the field exists, we always start with cancel, cancel. We're going to hit one arrow to the left to bring up the test menu. Enter that and uh, scroll down to the short finding mode. So one click down brings us to short finding. 
if I hit enter, it turns on the short finding mode, which sends a test signal down those wires. And with my leaking current clamp meter, I turn my leaking current clamp meter to milliamp reading, and I can clamp these wires and see that there is a significantly higher load on this wire than should be present with the two wire controller. So both, in this case, the red and the black wire, I measure them one at a time, and each one will show me a significantly higher reading than I would expect on this system. So this is my baseline reading, and I will chase this high current through the field, and as soon as I find where that current drops, I've found the issue with my system. All right, we've got the controller in short finding mode, and if I put my, clamp, my leaking current clamp meter on the incoming line, you see my milliamp reading go through the roof, right? And so this is a junction box where the two wire path comes in on this line and goes out on these two lines. So if I test this line right here, you see that my milliamp reading again through the roof, but if I put the clamp on this one, it's a very adequate reading, very low, less than 10, um, showing that the issue on this line comes in and we can see it on the one that's directly to the controller. We can see it on the line that has the issue, but the one that doesn't have an issue on it, the reading is fine. So we know that everything beyond this point on this line should work just fine. So in a nutshell, that's how to troubleshoot WeatherTrack 2 wire. First, isolate the issue, make sure it's a problem with the two wire path and not a WeatherTrack issue. Then isolate the issue on the hardware, separate the controller from the two wire path. Then you'll likely use the required tools to troubleshoot the two wire path and find the short in the field. And as always, we're here to help. If you need support, check out our HydroPoint knowledge base at support.hydropoint.com where we have a search engine full of task-based troubleshooting articles to help WeatherTrack users find answers to frequently asked questions. We also have the customer support team who I think of as the front lines available at support at hydropoint.com or at the 800 number. You can check out our downloadable library of documentation at hydropoint.com or check out my additional training options at HydroPoint University. So if there's anything we can do to help, let us know. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in and good luck troubleshooting your two-wire.